The other thing that you just mentioned that a lot of people talk about and, and just kind of goes unnoticed, people consider you one of the best screening point guards in the history of basketball. That John Stockton at six foot one, 165 pounds, set some of the best screens in basketball. I, I would have to assume that was just something you did and you took pride in and, and you didn't care about the lumps you took. You had a screen to set and you were going to do it as hard as anything else you did on the court. Well, it doesn't, I'm only, you mentioned I'm only 175 pounds. And so to do it hard isn't really how it works. I think there's a, you have to try to be clever. I mean, you're screening. If you can get a mismatch, you can get a guy my size guarding Carl, that game's over. And so, um, you know, you try to get a body on a person that they, where they don't have an angle to gain leverage on you. You try to get it in my case where they couldn't elbow you in the head as they're trying to fight through the screen, right? Um, so you put your head in a place where they can't get to it. Um, you try to figure out the angle that Carl's trying to go or somebody else you're setting the screen for and try to be clever. And then you just hold your ground. I had a trainer at Gonzaga who, who, who's become and still is one of my all-time best friends, Steve DeLong. And he used to joke, he was a wrestler. He used to talk about, I anchor myself to the center of the planet. And he, he says it, he doesn't smile or joke about it, but I get what he means. And so when I'd go in there and set the screen, I'd try to, anchor myself to the center of the planet so that I can be budged. And, you know, if you're low enough, uh, the weights balance out a little bit. So I took pride in them. I was asked to do it a lot. Jeff Hornacek on our team was also asked to screen a lot. And um, heck, if it makes your team better, why not? So obviously, Carl, we're going to take Carl off the table as best guys you played with or against. Uh, in the NBA, uh, when you start thinking of the two or three guys that that you would, and from your era, that you would pay money to see because you just love the way they approach the game, love the way they played the game, and they were going to dazzle you, who comes to mind most easily? Well, I was always pretty impressed with in in the time when I was growing through that was both the Lakers and the um, and the Celtics were perennial, you know, opponents in the finals, and um, you, you know, it probably sounds cliche ish, but I, I I've always enjoyed watching that that battle with the Bird and, and Magic, um, two people that I think dramatically impacted our game in a positive way and and in, incorporated passing. Um, made their teammates better. They all thought ahead of the plays. I mean, those guys are very, very obvious for me. Um, I can name a bunch of point guards who I, I dial, you know, locked horns with a lot. And certainly I, early on, Isaiah and then, um, you know, Kevin Johnson was a was a epic battle for me a lot out west. We played Phoenix a ton in the season, and then we seemed to play him every year in the playoffs. Terry Porter, um, later on, Gary, of course, Gary Payton. Um, and there are really lots more, too. Those are just ones that are coming off the top of my head. But uh, so many great players, and that's what makes it fun. Hello, everyone. I spend a lot of time trying to get you guys nice videos. So please subscribe to this page and please subscribe to my second page. The link to my second page is in the description section. Thank you.